shooting is always under scrutiny. So when there's a change in the rules for the rest of society, we must toe the line and hang bells and whistles on it for good measure. It's going to be fascinating to see what goes into making today's partridge shoot in Hampshire doable, workable and responsible. Is that a homemade mask? Yes. Are they all curtains in the front room? <laughs> it's the first day of this shoot's season and Roy is joining a fine team of guns from magazine editors to Olympic medalists and sporting agents. No touching. I've written no touching so I'll say it. No touching. <laughs> Right, Roy and Becky, <laughs> you're allowed to touch. You're the same bubble. Really? <laughs> They're all guests of Keith Gorsuch. He runs the Steventon and Farley wallop shoots. Getting to this point has taken a huge amount of effort. Today's our first day through. Hopefully that won't be too apparent. But to, to make it all happen, we've had uh, forms that need to go out to the guns before they come. Um, that was really it. impressive. That online system last night was really good. Is that something that's unique to yourselves? Uh, yes, indeed. Sue's uh, has pulled that one together for us. There are various uh, health questions within that uh, document. Standard questions, really, but pulled together in a format that allows us to assess hazard. It's for everybody's safety, yeah. The beaters and pickers up are in bubbles of six. There's hand sanitizer everywhere. And if you want the salt at lunch, under restaurant rules, you'll have to shout. This is the distance people tend to keep away from anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Our first drive and Roy is using some new kit. He has Beretta's new Silver Pigeon, the Beretta Silver Pigeon 3. Launched just a few weeks ago, it's the game version of the well-known Silver Pigeon shotgun. Plus, we have a few boxes of Game Ball's BioWad steel shells left over from a field tester Eco Shell Day. You lined up Steve Scott, Olympian. How do you feel about that? Yeah. A bit rusty? Very rusty. No, I don't, I, yeah, I've, um, I've seen Steve shoot a few times and um, yeah, I, all I can say is I'm just pleased I'm not on the peg next to him because he no, would be wiping... Patrick Galbraith. I know, yeah, poor old Patrick's all does next to him, thank all God. Does is <laughs> I was just, no, thank God I wasn't next to Steve. I've got, yeah, Connor's here as well, he's a, a fantastic shot and a lot of the guys here are very, very good shots. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm just going to stay really, really quiet and um, hopefully I won't have to raise the gun too much. That's the better one. First day for you? I was actually in Suffolk wildfowling last weekend, or that was the plan anyway. Okay, so. how'd you get on there? Uh, well, the only thing which I shot was a snipe. So right. It was one for one. And okay. It was, um, <laughs> well, keep, if you can keep that average today, no, you'll be doing I mean, well. Yeah, well, I've already let myself down on that front. It was the, <laughs> possibly the smallest snipe I think I've ever shot. I totally oh, really? felt bad about it, but I went home the next day and ate it with some um, scrambled eggs. Did it eat well though? Yeah, it did, yeah, yeah. It's always, I think, almost the smaller it is, the more you appreciate it. <laughs> Sliced it up on top of some scrambled eggs. <laughs> That's your story for life. <laughs> The first drive is a warm-up. The others prove to be the drives that just keep on giving. The birds continue to rocket over the guns for at least 20 minutes apiece. Shot. Second drive is definitely uh, proving to be a little busier. We've got, uh, and the birds are presenting really well, actually. There we go. So, uh, yeah, no, there's some crackers coming through here. <laughs> now, Roy, do you want to take the other one? Because <laughs> I can't see. I was, we, were, we, were, we were saying you for skills. At Elevenses, we catch up with Olympic double trap bronze medalist Steve Scott, who is now turning his hand to gamekeeping on Keith's Farley wallop shoot. So, I've been working with Keith now for about four months since coming off the funding programme. Um, so I've been here sort of helping out the keepers, getting the pens sorted and getting all the feeders out and stuff like that. So learning a new, uh, a new um, way of life really. Uh, it's been really interesting, it's nice working outside as well and seeing how obviously I've shot game now for about six, seven years. And it's nice seeing how it all works and seeing what they go through and the hard work they put in to produce a good day for the guns. All oh, right, so you didn't come from 
game then you you were you were competitive all yep. the way through and then found game yes yes exactly so i started at the age of nine shooting clays um i've done a little bit of rough shooting to be fair so i've done um your pigeon shooting um rabbit shooting and stuff like that but um no i worked my way into game about six years ago when i was very luckily invited um, to come game shooting by Mr. Gorsuch, actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, have a look back. You got some great birds on that last drive. I was a little bit lucky on the last drive. No, yeah, I think, I think a few of them flew into my lead. Frickin yeah. Bronze medalist. <laughs> I did pace one out about 75 yards. I was quite happy with that one. That was the long one. And Keith was standing behind me. I can't repeat the words he said, but it was a few, <laughs> it's very rare to hear him swear and be impressed in the same sentence. So, um, yeah, that gave me a bit of pleasure to uh, hear him say that and uh, pull down quite a long target. That was a better bird there are four there. drives today, two before a break, one before lunch and one after lunch. Everyone is getting some shooting and Roy is happy with the idea that he's not leaving Bastrop on the field. We've just picked up a couple of wads here. So we've got, that is the, the bio wad, so that should dissolve and disappear very rapidly. And then we've got our normal traditional plastic wad, which unfortunately will stay around for a damn sight longer. Does it make you feel better walking off this field knowing that you're leaving stuff that will be gone in 24 hours? No, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know about feeling better. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a responsibility now to make sure that we're not discarding plastics everywhere, that we're not, um, or, you know, we're, we're cutting down on, on the amount of lead that we're putting into, um, into the food chain. From my perspective, we can make the food that is going into the food chain more acceptable um, for a wider audience. And, and if, people, if that's what it's going to take to make people happier to, to eat more game, um, then I'm, I'm all for it. Roy and Bex have some young dogs with them today. He explains why it's best to avoid using pigeons to teach retrieving skills. We try to avoid picking up pigeons to start with because they're a lot looser feathered. So you can just see how easily the feathers are just coming out of my hand there. And that's exactly the same when a young dog picks it up. Those feathers will come out in the dog's mouth and they can just gum their mouth up a little bit, make them feel a little bit, I suppose, a bit down in the mouth. The partridges are not as, nowhere near as bad. I mean, you can see with the partridge, yeah, I mean, yeah, doing the same thing with the partridge, there's a few little bits, but they're a lot tighter feathered. The partridges are okay and pheasants are good, but as I say, it's the, the pigeons that are, are very, very soft. Like it is, it is, you know, you can just see them there, the feathers are just coming out as I'm handling it quite gently. At lunch, we grab Patrick Galbraith, editor of Shooting Times, to talk about the new silver pigeon, an iconic shotgun that he is featuring in this week's issue. One of the amazing things with them is that people get one uh, as a sort of first gun or a first proper gun and they carry on shooting and shoot more and more and more and more and actually just carry on shooting with the Silver Pigeon because, you know, it fits well, it yeah. shoots well and just the reliability of them. I mean, I, uh, I won't mention the brand, but I changed to, a, to another make of gun after having my Silver Pigeon for a long time. It was only really at that point that I realised that guns do stop working from time to time because I treated yeah. that Beretta pretty badly. And they, yeah, they're just solid. Just works, yeah, yeah. just works. Don't reinvent the wheel is always a good thing in terms of gun making and yeah. Beretta have done something slightly different here the forearm slightly different but it's going to feel like um, you know the gun that people have sort of you know known and loved over the years. To me they're, they're, it's very similar as, as starting off your rifle shooting career if you're using a, a Tico or a Seiko you know they're, they're a solid workhorse and they, they see you through you know they do last. It'll be interesting with the wood because one of the things with the older silver pigeons that the uh, the quality of the wood was really quite good and then I think perhaps there was a little bit of a and now they seem to be getting back there so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it goes down with, uh, with silver pigeon enthusiasts. The final drive is a more gentle affair and finishes off the day well. You know, only a few months ago there was so much uncertainty and you know, to be out in the shooting field again has just been an absolute joy um, and a, a, a bit of an escape and a bit of a break from um, all of the, uh, the negativity that's surrounding COVID at the moment. And, and again, I mean, we couldn't have been any safer out in the field today. Before heading back for a cuppa and a slice of cake, we talked to Ollie Seven for a chat from the agency arm of William Powell. He has a countrywide overview of how well shoots are complying with COVID restrictions. The COVID situation is, is one we are in and it's one we all recognise that we're in and, and as a result the, the correct protocol and procedures have been used and put in place across all the moors, which is obviously imperative for, for the safety of the guns, 
pickers up, the beaters, everybody involved. We appreciate that it's, we're incredibly fortunate to be out in the field uh, and people aren't taking it for granted and are, are really sort of um, taking note of, of what we're saying and, uh, and, and what we're asking for, which is uh, fantastic and incredibly important. It's taken a great deal of work to create a shoot that observes social distancing while delivering a day to remember. We hope it will be a blueprint for us to present to shooters and non-shooters on how it should and is being done. For anyone interested in shooting at the Steventon or Farley shoots this season, go to sportinggameservices.co.uk.